Before we begin our lesson today, let's review a little bit about the atom. Let's remember that protons are found in the nucleus. They have a positive charge and they have a mass of 1 AMU. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. They have no charge or are neutral and they also have a mass of 1 AMU. Electrons are found in the electron cloud and they have a mass, they have no mass at all. They are, have a negative charge. So they have, they're an electron cloud. They have a negative charge and they're found in the cloud, the electron cloud. So with this lesson we want to talk about a couple of different things. The gentleman that you see here is a man by the name of Niels Bohr. And Niels Bohr was a physicist uh, working in the early 20th century. He came up with a model of the atom. It's basically the model of the atom that we use today. All the pictures that you see where you have a... nucleus in the middle surrounded by the electron cloud. That's a Bohr model and pretty much every model that you see of an atom today is called the Bohr model and he came up with that idea. It's probably not exactly what an atom looks like but it's a pretty good representation. So all the models that we're looking at today are Bohr models, and this is a Bohr model. Um, I'm going to show you a few more in just a minute, but we're also going to be looking at valence electrons. And valence electrons, it's very simple, are the electrons on the outermost energy level. So here's a valence electron and here's a valence electron. They're the, on the outermost energy level of the atom. Um, the first energy level will hold only two electrons. The second energy level will hold up to eight electrons. And then the third energy level will hold up to 18. But only eight of those electrons can be valence electrons. So here's some more Bohr models. Um, and for most of these, we can actually count the valence electrons. This model up here at the top we would have a difficult time counting the, the valence electrons because we can't really tell which energy level is the lowest and which is the highest. It's just a, a representation of the model of the atom itself. And we have no idea what atom or element it's representing. But the other three, we can actually uh, determine what atom it is. Even though we don't know how many protons are in this, if I know the number of valence electrons and the number of energy levels, then, then I can pretty much figure out what element it is on the periodic table, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but obviously this one has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Remember that a, an atom can have up to eight valence electrons. And that second level, it's, it could hold three more valence electrons, which means that you have to remember now that, a, that an atom wants to have its outer energy level full of valence electrons. So in nature, it's either going to lose electrons or going to gain valence electrons in order to be stable. This one has five valence electrons. So more than likely, it's going to try to gain three valence electrons from another element in order to be stable. And when it does that, then it will bond with that other element. So any element that has three valence electrons 
could easily bond with this particular atom. This down here at the bottom, it tells us it has 53 protons, so we could just go to the periodic table and see how many find number 53 on the table, and we could, we could tell what element that is. Um, and this fourth model here simply shows us the nucleus, and it tells us the three energy levels and that the first energy level will hold two electrons, the second will hold eight electrons, and the third will hold 18 electrons. So now how do we gather the information about valence electrons from the periodic table? Well actually it's, it's pretty simple. And we see here a periodic table, and it's a little fuzzy, but I think we can make it up. If you'll notice across the top, there are numbers from one to 18, because there are 18 columns on the periodic table. Um, here we have column one, column two, and column three and so on, but we're most interested in columns one, two, and then 13 through 18 on the periodic table. The column number or group number for one, two, 13 through 18 tell us the number of valence electrons that every element in that group has. So every element in group one has one valence electron. Every element in group two has two valence electrons. There's a little trick when we get over here to 13, because remember you can only have eight valence electrons. That's the maximum amount. So on group 13 and continuing through group 18, what we have to do is simply take out the one. So group 13 has three valence electrons, group 14 has four valence electrons, group 15 has five valence electrons, and so on, till we get to group 18, which is eight valence electrons, and they're stable. They, they will not gain or lose electrons. And so basically, these, these are the noble gases, and they are found in nature alone. They stand by themselves. So all the other elements on the periodic table found in nature are generally found bonded to other elements. But the noble gases do not bond because their outer energy level is full of valence electrons. Now along the side of the periodic table you will see numbers 1 through 7 because there are 7 rows on the periodic table and those are known as the periods. So this is period one across here only has two elements hydrogen and helium. Period two has a few more elements. Period three has the same amount and then we get down to periods four through seven who that go all the way across the table with elements. The period number tells us how many energy levels the elements have in that period. So in period one, hydrogen and helium only have one energy level. And hydrogen has one energy level and one valence electron. Helium has one energy level and two valence electrons. So helium's a, uh, over here, it's in group 18. It says it has eight valence electrons, but it only has two because it only has one energy level and that first energy level will only hold two valence electrons. So a minute ago we were looking at a, an atom that had two energy levels, so it would be in period two, and it had five valence electrons, which means it's going to be in group 15. And so here's the element right here, and I can't read that very well, but I believe that is phosphorus. So to find valence electrons, again, we use the group number. And for groups 13 through 18, we simply take the one off the, off the front and use the second number. And again, here are the periods, which tells us the number of energy levels in the element.